Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to call this meeting to order. Uh, so today's meeting is being called for one purpose, which is to consider the child care business license application uh, uh, here before us for 4990 Cedar Crest Avenue. Uh, my name is Mike Little, Mayor of the District of North Vancouver, so the pleasure falls to me to welcome you here to this hearing. Uh, with us, we have uh, members of uh, staff, the public, and council joining us both in person and virtually. So we do have uh, councillors Miri and Back joining us virtually uh, at this time, which means you have a full council considering the matter here tonight. I have a bit of a script that I have to read at the beginning of the hearing, and so uh, let me just uh, make my way through that. Council seeking input for the public with respect to the issuance of a proposed child care facility business license for Manage SEB uh, owner Lollipop Child Care Center at uh, 4990 Cedar Crest Avenue. This meeting is being held in a hybrid format, meaning there's a combination of in-person and electronic participation by some or all members of council staff and the public. Public participation in this meeting is being accommodated by speakers having signed up in advance as stated in the notice of meeting, as well as observers being provided the Zoom meeting information on the DMV website and in the notice of meeting. Those observing the meeting via Zoom who did not sign up in advance to speak but decide to do so once the meeting is underway may either use the raise hand function if participating using a computer or press star nine on your telephone keypad if you're participating, participating by phone. The electronic means being employed for this meeting allow for effective two-way audio and video communications via the Zoom software. As always, written submissions will be received by the corporate officer on behalf of and shared with council at any time up to the time the meeting is closed. Uh, these may be submitted to input at dnv.org. Therefore, in this manner, all persons will be afforded a reasonable opportunity to be heard and to present written submissions. The chair has established the following rules for this meeting. The fo following the staff and applicant presentations, we will go through the established speakers list at the end of the speakers list, the chair may call for any other speakers not on the speakers list. You will have five minutes to address council for a first time. Begin your remarks to council by stating your name. After everyone who wishes to speak has spoken once, speakers will then be allowed one additional five minute opportunity. Any additional presentations will only be allowed at the discretion of the chair. Please do not repeat information from your previous presentations and ensure your comments remain focused on the application under consideration this evening. If you provided a written submission, there's no need to read it as it will have already been seen by council. You may summarize or briefly reiterate the highlights of your submission, but ensure your comments pertain to the application under consideration at this meeting. All speakers and members of the audience are asked to be respectful of one another as diverse opinions are expressed. Council wishes to hear everyone's views in an open and impartial forum. Some important notes about public meetings. Council's here to listen to the public, not to debate the merits of the application. Council may ask clarifying questions. The corporate officer has a binder containing documents and submissions related to the application which council has received and which you are welcome to review. This is available to view in hard copy on the table next to the door and online at dnv.org forward slash agenda. Everyone at the meeting will be provided an opportunity to speak. Finally, please note that this meeting is being streamed live over the internet and recorded in accordance with the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act. At this time, I'm going to call on staff for the initial um, uh, staff presentation. Staffa. Thank you very much, uh, Your Worship. Good evening, members of council and community members. My name is Tina Adfa. I'm the Director of Community Planning and Housing. I'd like, with your permission, uh, Your Worship, to ask Jaden Coop to come up to the front counter to front table to deliver the report, the presentation from staff. Jaden has worked uh, on a number of childcare related matters including updating the inventory. She works with the Child Care Grants Committee uh, every year to help uh, council make decisions on grants to small child cares. So with your permission, Your Worship. Welcome, Ms. Coop. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Jaden Coop, and I am a community planner with the District of North Vancouver. I am here tonight to provide an overview of the business license application for Lollipop Child Care Center, which is located at 4990 Cedar Crest Avenue and is located in the Cleveland neighborhood. 
I have a brief presentation that will summarize some key aspects of the proposal. The purpose of this public meeting is to provide an opportunity for any interested resident to share their views with council regarding this application, which proposes an increase, increase in capacity at the existing child care facility. The district has a child care facilities business regulation bylaw. This bylaw requires child care applications proposing care for 11 to 20 children in a residential building to be referred to a public meeting and considered by council at a subsequent regular meeting. As per the requirements of the bylaw, public notification of this meeting was provided to all properties within 50 meters of the facility. The applicant has operated Lollipop Child Care Center from their home since January, 2021. They are currently licensed to provide child care for eight multi-age children. They currently have a wait list of children wanting to attend with additional people frequently contacting the applicant to ask about availability. The applicant's proposal is to increase the childcare capacity from eight to 20 children. This 20 children would include 12 spots for group childcare under 36 months and eight spots for group childcare 30 months to school age. The district has planning guidelines for group childcare and residential zones, which were updated in 2014. These guidelines are intended to guide staff when assessing childcare proposals with more than eight children in residential areas. The guidelines provide a number of considerations as shown on this slide, and I will discuss these considerations in relation to the application in the following slides. Regarding the location, this facility is located in the Cleveland neighborhood at the corner of Cedarcrest Avenue and Clements Avenue. Cedarcrest is a local road which offers good accessibility to Mont Royal Boulevard, a minor arterial road, and Prospect Avenue, a collector road. The facility is near a number of existing community amenities, including multiple parks and Mont Royal Elementary School. There are two existing childcare facilities in the Cleveland neighborhood, which are both licensed to provide multi-age childcare. Regarding the transportation needs, the planning guidelines recommend a facility with 20 children should have four parking stalls. However, only two are required by the zoning bylaw. This site meets the zoning bylaw requirements as there are two parking stalls in the garage. There is space for a four additional parking stalls on the existing driveway. The applicant has indicated a maximum of four staff, including herself, will be working at the facility at any given time. District staff believe parking space at the site is sufficient, seeing as it meets the district zoning bylaw requirements for parking. On-street parking is available on Cedar Crest and Clements Avenue. Bus stops are located in close proximity to the subject site. There are no conflicts with pickups and drop-offs at nearby amenities. For the current child care, parents drop their children off using a variety of transportation methods, including driving and walking. And currently at the child care, pickup and drop-off times are staggered. Regarding the facility's design, the existing child care program operates on the lower floor of a three-story home as pictured on this slide. The applicant is proposing to operate the eight spaces for children 30 months to school age in this existing space on the lower floor. The applicant is proposing renovations to the main floor of their home to add a second child care space where the 12 spaces for children under 36 months would be operated. The proposed area on the main floor has large windows for natural light and fresh air. The applicant is also proposing a new outdoor play area on the south side of the property which has direct access to the proposed childcare space on the main floor. There is an existing fence around the current outdoor play area and the applicant is pro proposing a new five foot fence to go around this new outdoor play area. The new fence would ensure the play area is enclosed and reduce privacy and noise impacts. The property provides sufficient outdoor space for the proposed number of children. As for neighborhood character, here's a view of the house from Clements Avenue looking south. In this picture, you can see the fence that surrounds the existing outdoor play space located on the north side of the property. This site is a corner lot and has one abutting neighbor to the east. The character of the home and yard is compatible with Cedar Crest Avenue and Clements, which are characterized by single family homes. And large trees surround the south and west side of the property, which further helps with noise mitigation and privacy. And finally, regarding neighborhood consultation, letters were mailed to all properties within 50 meters of the facility, inviting them to attend an open house. 
Prior to the open house, one neighbor contacted the applicant to express support for the proposal. On February 28th, the applicant held an open house for neighbors, which was attended by district staff. Three people attended the open house, including one neighbor to express support for the application, one neighbor to express concern regarding parking. In particular, they expressed concern regarding parking along Clements Avenue, noting there is typically more parking on Cedar Crest. And finally, one parent whose child attends Lollipop Child Care came to the open house to support the application. The applicant indicated they will ask parents to park along Cedar Crest Avenue instead of Clements, and the applicant has indicated their commitment to continue working with neighbors should any issues arise. The district has a policy objective to increase the amount of quality child care spaces in the community, and council approved the child care action plan in 2020 to provide a pathway to meet the district's child care needs. The child care action plan includes the need for an additional 2,055 child care spaces in the district by 2030. This includes the need for infant toddler and preschool age spaces in the upper Capilano neighborhood where Lollipop is located. In closing, the child care action plan identifies child care as an important building block in the creation of safe, healthy and livable communities. That concludes my presentation and I'm happy to answer any questions that mayor and council may have. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, Ms. Coop. Uh, next, uh, we'll provide an opportunity for the applicant to uh, make a presentation. Is there someone here rec representing the applicant? I'm just going to open up the presentation. Okay. Use this to flip between the slides. Okay, so I'm going to get slide show. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. My name is Manije, and I am the owner and manager of Lollipop Child Care. First of all, let me thank you for uh, thank you all for coming here today, as uh, you can see on the screen. I'll start with my background first, and I will talk about our location. Then I look at our curriculum and activities. Next, reasons for uh, expansion. Then I'm going to talk about our future plan, and finally, listening to our neighbors. Let me start by saying a few words about my own background. I'm originally from Iran. I've always had a deep love for education and childcare. My career in education began when I was just 19 years old. Over the next 23 years, I, decided, I dedicated myself to teaching and eventually, eventually becoming the principal of the mid, middle and high school with over 300 students. My passion for Persian literature led me to earn a master's degree in the field. In 2012, my family and I immigrated to Canada where I embarked on a new chapter of my life. It wasn't easy, but I was determined to succeed. In 2022, I realized my dream of opening my own daycare, Lollipop Childcare. I continue to expand my knowledge by earning in an infant and toddler certificate in November 2023. Currently, I'm dedicate, dedicated to obtaining a certificate in a special needs education to better support all children's needs. Aside from my professional journey, my family is my rock. My husband and two sons have been my biggest supporters throughout it all. Their love and encouragement keep me going every day. I'm excited to continue making a difference in the lives of children and families, both professionally and personally. Let's move to the next part, which is location. Lollipop is situated at 4990 Cedar Crest Avenue, North Vancouver. It is located within a community that includes two elementary schools, Mount Royal and Kenyan Heights School, both in close proximity to Lollipop. Additionally, families can enjoy can enjoy the convenience of Prospect and Cleveland Park, which is located nearby. At Lollipop Childcare, we offer a comprehensive curriculum designed to stimulate children's development while fostering a love for learning. Our curriculum incorporates a wide range of activities to cater to the diverse interests and learning style of children. Here's an overview of curriculum and activities. 
We have outdoor play, nature walk, dramatic play area, circle time, music and movement, art and craft, math, science, practical life, learning to, through play and yoga. We believe in the importance of outdoor play for children, physical health and overall well-being. Our outdoor play area is designed to encourage exploration, physical activity, and social interaction. Children have access to a variety of equipment and materials to engage in active play and develop gross motor skills. <coughs> Nature Walk is an integral part of our curriculum as it provides children with opportunities to connect with nature, absorb the environment, and develop an appreciation for the natural world. Through dramatic play, through dramatic play, children have the opportunity to use their imagination, creativity, and language skills. Our dramatic play area is equipped with props, custom, and role-playing materials that allow children to explore different roles and enhancing their social and emotional development. Circle time is a special part of our daily routine where children come together as a group to participate in interactive activities such as the storytelling, singing, and group discussion. This time promotes language development, social skills, and community building. Music and movement activity are incorporated in, into our curriculum to promote physical coordination and self-expression. Children engage in singing, dancing, and playing musical instrument, which not only enhances their motor skills, but also foster creativity and sense of joy. Artistic ex expression, expression is encouraged through a variety of art and craft activity. Children have the opportunity to explore different materials, texture, and techniques as they create their own masterpiece. Art activities promote creativity, fine motor skills, and self-expression. We integrate math concept into everyday activities to promote early numeracy and scientific exploration. Children engage in hands-on activities such as counting, sorting, measuring, and experimenting to develop critical thinking skills and a curiosity for learning. Science exploration is a part of our curriculum at Lollipop Childcare. We believe in fostering children natural curiosity and sense of wonder about the world around them. Children engage in activities such as sensory exploration and simple experiment to learn about scientific concepts and develop critical thinking. Practical life activities are incorporated into our curriculum to help children develop independence, responsibility, and everyday life skills. These activities may include pouring, scooping, buttoning, and other tasks that promote fine motor skills and self-help skills. Play-based learning is at the core of our curriculum philosophy. We believe that children learn best through hands-on experience where they can explore, experiment, and discover at their own pace. Our environment is intentionally designed to encourage open-ended play and ex exploration. Yoga activities are incorporated into our curriculum to promote physical fitnesses and relaxation. Children engage in age-appropriate yoga pose, poses, breathing exercise, and relaxation techniques to support their physical and emotional well-being. Expanding lollipop childcare from a multi-age setting to a group childcare can offer several important community needs and benefits. Increase access to childcare. Expanding the capacity of lollipop childcare to accommodate 20 children with a specific spot allocated for different age group address, addresses the community need for accessible and affordable childcare services. With a large capacity, more families in the community will have the opportunity to enroll their children in quality childcare supporting working parents. Age appropriate programming by offering designated spots for different age group, including infant and toddler and preschool children, Lollipop Childcare can tailor its programming to meet the specific developmental need and interest of each age group. Age appropriate activities, curriculum and environment can be designed to support children's learning and social emotional development at every stage. Support for working families. The expanded childcare capacity at Lollipop Childcare 
provide much needed support for working families, including those with infants and toddlers who require full-time care. By offering reliable and high quality childcare services, Lollipop enable parents to, to pursue employment, education, or training opportunity contributing to the economic well-being of the community. Community integration and diversity. A large childcare facility with a diverse mix of children from different age groups fosters community integration and diversity. Children have the opportunity to interact with peers from diverse background, cultures, and experiences promoting empathy, understanding, and respect for others. This, in this inclusive environment helps prepare children to navigate as a diverse and multicultural society. Parental support and engagement. Expanding Lollipop Child Care provides opportunities for increased parental involvement and engagement in their children's early education and care. With expanded capacity, Lollipop offer opportunities for parent-teacher communication and collaboration, empowering parents to actively participate in their children's learning and developmental journey. Here's our future plan. Enhance curriculum development. Develop and enrich curriculum to the diverse age group within the expanded childcare facility, incorporating age-appropriate learning activities and experiences. Implement a play-based approach to learning that promotes exploration, creativity, and critical thinking skills, including language and literacy, mathematics, science, social studies, and the art. A specialized program and Enrichment activities offer specialized programs and enrichment activities des uh, designed to enhance children's learning and development, such as music and movement classes, yoga session, and gardening projects. Collaborate with local community pa partners, including libraries, museum, and cultural organization to provide children with unique learning opportunity and experiences outside the childcare city. Parent engagement, establish a strong parent engagement program that foster parentship between families and educators, offering opportunity for family events and regular communication channel to support parents in their role as their child first teacher. Provide resources and guidance, guidance to parents on topics related to child development, positive parenting practices and strategies for supporting learning and growth at home. Outdoor learning and nature exploration. Develop outdoor learning environment that promote exploration, sensory stimulation, and physical activities, such as nature walk, gardening, outdoor art project, and sensory play areas. Inclusive practice and support services. Ensure that the expanded childcare facility embraces inclusive practice and provide support services to meet the diverse needs of all children, including those with disability, developmental delays, or English language learners. By implementing these future plan and activities, our childcare facility can provide a nurturing, stimulating, and inclusive learning environment that support the holistic development and well-being of children in our care. Listening to our neighbors. One of our neighbors has concern about traffic at Clement Avenue. To help with this, we have made sure there is plenty of space for parents to park safely and, and conveniently when bringing their children to and from our, our center. We have, design, we have designated a spot in our driveway and a gravel area next to our building at Cedar Crest Avenue, specifically for uh, drop-off and pickup. We kindly ask parents to use this area to minimize any inconvenience to our neighbors and ensure a smooth traffic flow. It's all about being considerate and making sure everyone can get where they need to go without any trouble. We are committed to working together with our neighbors to address any concern and find solutions that work for everyone. On behalf of Lollipop family and myself, I want to express heartful gratitude to each and every one of you for your presence, attention, and support. Your encouragement means a lot to me. Thank you once again, and we look forward to continue to serve 
our community and making a positive impact together. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, uh, we're gonna go to public representations now. Uh, I do have four people who have signed up to speak in advance of the meeting. Once we've gone through those speakers, then we'll uh, go back and check with the room and see if there are additional speakers or online as well. Um, and so the first speaker I have is uh, Josh uh, Kojerninski and uh, Kojerninski, Jerzinski, there you go. Uh, Tracy Bird, followed by Glenn Simkus and Madison Grist. So is Josh here? Welcome. Uh, yeah, let's have a seat there and uh, welcome. You have five minutes to address the meeting. Thank you. Um, and thanks to all of you for taking the time this evening. Um, I'd like to speak very strongly in support of Manage Manny um, and her application to expand her daycare. Uh, so just to introduce myself, and my family, uh, my wife Madison and I were both working professionals. We have jobs that take us out of the house, unfortunately, for much of the day. Um, and we don't have family support. We don't have much as far as people who can help us out with childcare in our neighborhood or nearby. Um, and we have our son, Asher. Asher's now two and a half. And I can't believe he's been at Lollipop since he was 11 months old, not even 11 months old. Yeah, it was just over 10 months and it was actually earlier than we intended. But at that point we were told that there was a spot that had opened up and we were worried that this spot was gonna be taken by the time he started a, at a year. And we jumped on it and we were worried about it. And it was the best thing that could have happened to us. So we moved to the neighborhood. We actually live just north of Mont Royal Elementary School. Um, we moved there about two years ago. We put our names on multiple daycare wait lists when my wife was first pregnant at about two months into pregnancy. It's now three years later and some of those wait lists have not actually accepted us, believe it or not. So there's some wait lists that have just not moved. Um, and we put ourselves on wait lists across both the district and the city of North Vancouver. We've been so fortunate to get in at Lollipop and just to watch my son Asher's developments through his experiences at Lollipop has been mind blowing. Um, Manny, I had no idea of your experience and just professional qualifications, but I'm not surprised. It makes sense. Asher comes home and he teaches me yoga. He's learned to count beyond 10. He's learned his alphabet. He sings songs and he just comes home thriving every single day. So happy uh, with his experiences at his daycare. We had spent a few months living with my in-laws in South Surrey, and he spent a few months in one of the larger daycares with 100 or so kids. <clears throat> and not to speak negatively about that, because it's important, but the way he was at the end of the day there was just not my son. He was exhausted. He just sort of seemed, seemed like a bit of a shell of himself because of all the uh, other kids and all of the entertainment and just all of the um, everything else going on there. And when we were so fortunate to keep our spot and get our spot back at Lollipop, he's just sort of returned to himself. And we've been so fortunate to be able to watch him thrive and to have access to daycare, not just where he thrives, but also in an area that works for our family. We have a dog. I'm able to walk my dog to daycare some mornings and to pick him up. You know, if I start early in the morning, it's daycare starts early enough that I'm able to get him to daycare and get myself to work, pick him up at the end of the day. It allows us as a family for both my wife and I to work relatively intense jobs um, without having to sacrifice our professional careers for childcare in a neighborhood where you really do need at the very least two working professionals or two working couples to just sort of afford to live in this neighborhood where we feel so fortunate to reside. So, my wife, I think, wanted to speak a little bit more towards some of the voiced concerns from our neighbors. Um, so I just wanted to leave it at, you know, how positive an experience that we've had, how fortunate we feel to be part of the Lollipop family. And just being in a neighborhood so close to where we live means that Asher not only is going to continue going to daycare with such close friends, but I hope that he's going to continue his entire education, whether it's at elementary school and beyond, with the friends that he's meeting at his daycare at Lollipop. So thank you for your time and thanks to you, Manny. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much.
Uh, next speaker I have is Tracy Bird, followed by Glenn Simkus. Tracy Bird joining us. Uh, they're virtual participant. Okay. I'm just going to check. We have someone listed as iPhone on the uh, on the virtual list here. Uh, person listed as iPhone. Can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear Hello. me now? I can. Is Hi. this uh, is this Tracy Bird? <laughs> it is me. Hi. Sorry, I was waiting Hi. to be let in properly. Um, nice to see you all tonight. <laughs> That's okay. Um, Welcome. You have five minutes to address the meeting. Okay, sure. Hi. Um, so my daughter attends uh, the daycare with Manny and um, the other ladies who have been helping with the care as well. And um, she is close to three years old. So, um, and I actually have another uh, child on the way. So we have another one coming this summer. And one of the things that's fairly obvious, and I know that we all kind of know in here is that daycare needs are high. And, you know, I am a working professional as well, and so is my husband. So we definitely, um, you know, with new baby on the way, are thinking a lot about how we really want our children to be in the same daycare together, even if it's like um, our daughter will be older and will be in the older age group. But it would be wonderful to have additional spots because um, our next child will need daycare in order for me to return to work. And as Josh shared uh, as well, it's definitely not an easy thing to get um, in in the area that we are and anywhere, right? So if if there is a place that is suitable, such as Manny's uh, tour expansion, um, I think, you know, she's incredibly respectful and I could only see her doing everything she can for the families, but also for her neighbors and being mindful of all that. But yeah, again, it's just, um, a, it, the needs are there. And if it's a space that is suitable, um, it certainly uh, can only benefit uh, everybody kind of in the community. Um, I understand because I, my, where we currently live, we live close to a school that has its pickup and drop off times and it has its busier times. But, you know, that's part of living in the community. And that's part of just understanding that if things get busy, right, at a certain period of time, even though like I'm there at pick up and drop off with my daughter all the time, and it's not overwhelming right now. And the space for pickup that would be used for the additional area of, um, for this expansion, um, you know, people don't even really park there. And it's, and it's, I, from what I could, I understand, it could be an additional four spots right there. So um, that's just like from, you know, in this, from my current perspective on it, um, I don't foresee parking to be um, too much of an issue and too much of a disruption. And I feel like people um, who attend the daycare as well will be respectful of the neighbors if there were any type of changes that needed to be made for pick up or drop off or anything of the sort. Um, so yeah, I guess like, again, uh, to reiterate, the daycare needs are high. Um, and, you know, we would, we really hope that I'm going to be able to go back to work when the time comes and that it wouldn't it be wonderful if Manny's daycare was expanded by that time. And then our children can continue to get the great quality care um, from Manny and, um, her the, the wonderful ladies who work with her now um i'm super actually excited to hear um when i was learning about the outdoor space um and the expansion uh i love the idea of the outdoor space being um larger and um for you know as the kiddos get older and bigger they need that more expansive space to be um, outside and exploring and um, currently they have that right now which is wonderful but um, I can only just see it benefiting um, the kids development too and also where it's placed I, I don't think like you know any type of like dis disruption or disturbances would be too loud or anything like that like it, it's, it's quite a nice placement 
um, from my perspective, um, that I don't think the kiddos would uh, be too problematic. Um, but anyways, uh, that's what I have to say is just, just to give you perspective of that. Yes, I've been on wait lists, um, you know, <laughs> before. Uh, sorry, my daughter's just coming wondering where I am. So I'm going to have to scoot out here. I only have 30 seconds. But um, yeah, I, where was I at? Sorry, my daughter just came in here. But um, I really, really do hope this happens for Manny. She's so deserving The the neighbors need it. It's right. Um, it's in a beautiful location. So um, I hope I've said enough. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your comments, Tracy Bird. Uh, the next speaker I have is Glenn Simkus. Glenn, joining us virtually today. Uh, yep, I'm here. You should be able to hear me. Hello. I can hear you. Welcome. You have five minutes to address the meeting. Brilliant. Right. So uh, my name is Glenn Simkus. I'm a resident of the district. I'm also a new dad. My baby daughter, three months old, is in the room behind me right there. Um, I wanted to voice my strong support for the child care. I was particularly alarmed to see the one public input posted on the agenda for this uh, meeting that was negative. Uh, I kind of wanted to speak to that. Um, I also want to thank the council for, you know, having this motion and considering it. And I want to thank Manny. Uh, I don't know you. I'm not a client of your day here, but those baby yoga pictures were adorable and the highlight of my day. Uh, thank you for that. Um, <clears throat> about me. So I grew up in that area. I went to Mount Royal Elementary from ages five on up. Um, and hands worth later. I'm very familiar with it. Spent my entire childhood there. Um, and, you know, it, there's a desperate need for childcare in that community. The, uh, the There are two elementary schools within 500 meters of that spot. Uh, and I think I looked at the child care action plan before this meeting, and uh, it was indicated by uh, staff that you need 172 new spots to uh, meet the demand for child care. So I, I'm you know, adding 12 would be real good to get us towards that because there are only like three locations and 24 spots currently in that neighborhood. Uh, the wait lists are crazy. We've already heard from from two other parents on that. I don't think I need to stress that point any more than I have. Um, but I also want to point out that like, I, I strongly believe that despite the fact that that whole area, right, that great network of cul-de-sacs linked by pedestrian accessible paths with a high density of parks and two elementary schools, it, that is the perfect spot to raise happy, healthy kids. Um, and, and I'm really saddened to see uh, the fact that Mont Royal Elementary's enrollment is declining, I, I think in large part due to the fact that the complete lack of childcare in the area is a turnoff for parents. Uh, who who want to go to what in, are, in my opinion, two of our finest schools in the province uh, for elementary. But, uh, you know, there's only 24 childcare spots nearby. What are you going to do, right? Um, so I, I can't stress enough the convenience for families that want to live there, that do live there, to have access to these spots. Um you know, I, I, I think everyone's probably familiar with the social, emotional, and educational benefits of quality child care generally. Uh, I don't think I really need to reiterate that. I'm sure you've got lots of briefings from staff and everything there. Some of them should be pretty obvious. Uh, I think I want to sort of just specifically talk on some of the other points of public input I saw and sort of the general uh, anti-child care talking points and address them. Um, so I uh, I, I was quite interested by Mr. Zand and Mr. Lavi's letter uh, indicating right, their concern for parking space. I think it's pretty obvious from the report that there would be a maximum of four staff. There are four, probably six parking spaces for that child care spot. Uh, as we've already heard, parents in the neighborhood, you know, it's quite a residential area between two elementary schools where a lot of people would be really able to walk their children to and from that spot. Clements is a really fantastic area to be able to walk to as a parent and walk back if you're working remotely or you know later driving uh with a staggered pickup and drop off i think there really should be absolutely no concern about either parking or uh traffic on that street it's it's just a slam dunk from that perspective um i also saw in the letter a concern for property values which is an absolutely wild statement to me again given that it is less than 500 meters from two different elementary schools and a major park 
Um, there's no, and like given you saw this one neighbor and trees on the other side, uh, I, I cannot imagine a universe in which having better access to childcare in that neighborhood would be detrimental to the property values of the people considering those other factors. Uh, it's just a strong win, win, win across the board. Um, so yeah, I guess in summary, uh, there's an unimaginably large need that this would put a, a tiny dent in for childcare in that area. I think that area has very strong benefits for children. And I'm, I'm a little bit sad or concerned to see a potential decline in the number of parents that are living in what I consider to be one of the greatest places to be a child in this, uh, in this district. And uh, yeah, I, I, I really cannot see any issues with parking given that there are off street parking spots to accommodate the staff a drop-off area with two spots to do any kind of drop-offs that are needed and a staggered drop-off and pick-up policy. Thank you very much. I think that's my end of my time. Thank you for your comments. Glenn Simkus. Uh, the next speaker I have is Madison Griss joining us here in person. Welcome. When you're comfortable, you have five minutes to address the meeting. Thank you. Um, my name is Madison Grist. I'm also a parent of a child who attends Lollipop. Um, you've already heard Josh you know, mention most of our, our glowing recommendations of, of Manny, but I'm just here to reiterate that um, without Manny, I don't know what option we'd have for, for Asher. It would mean me looking at whether I returned to work or, or didn't and having Manny there, it just was good, the perfect time we moved to the neighborhood when she opened um, and we were able to get a spot that, as Josh said, we're still on wait lists now almost three years later um, that just haven't moved. Um, for other, you know, childcare uh, opportunities in North Van. In terms of um, preschools where he would be going into, because he is kind of coming up at the age of three, we would prefer to keep him at Lollipop because of Manny's qualifications as an instructor and because of the hours, preschool hours are sometimes nine to 12, sometimes nine to two, but not conducive with um, being able to work outside the home full time. Um, You've already heard kind of glowing recommendations. You've heard some concerns as well to speak directly to some of the concerns. Um, parking, uh, we have staggered drop off and pick up times. I'm rarely there at the same time as another parent. Um, and when I am, there's often, you know, enough space on, on Clements to, to pull over to drop Asher off and, and to continue on my way. We also live in the neighborhood, so we often walk. Um, as a parent, you know, I'm really cautious in my driving around the, the neighborhood. I'm, I doubt that any of the parents that are dropping their kids off are the type of folks that are speeding in and out of the community. We live in the community. We care about our kids going there. Um, I think that kind of speaks for itself. Uh, to respond to concerns around noise, um, whenever we've raised you know, concerns with Manny, Manny's been so receptive and be it, we haven't raised concerns about noise, but you know, fears around our children and she's been all ears and, and willing to work with us. So I, I don't see that being an issue. If neighbors have concerns, I'm sure they can bring that to Manny and, and she'll you know, be as receptive and responses, responsive as she has been with parents. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's basically it. You've heard about property values potentially dropping. I think that's entirely speculative given that there's you know, already a decade there. I don't think a, a person who's considering buying in the neighborhoods looking at whether it has eight spots or 20 spots or 50 spots and Mount Royal Elementary is just up the road. So um, with that, I'll leave the rest of my time to someone else, but I just, yeah, speak so highly of Manny and her, her facility and we're so lucky to have her and I hope that more parents can join. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, would anybody else like to add their comments to the meeting? Have we received any questions to staff or are there any clarifying questions from members of council to the staff? Clarifying nature, please. Yeah. Uh, my question concerns the um, number of, it was, it, we needed to have 2055, 2055 additional spaces by 2030. And I'm just wondering if we have any knowledge of where we're at with that number at this point in time. Oh, there it is. Look, my colleague, <laughs> colleague, <laughs> Councillor Hansen is all over it. So 904, we still need 904. Is that correct? No, we need. <laughs> oh, I thought you pointed me to the 904 right. figure. 
Okay, perfect, thank you. So we still need 1,100 then, is that correct? Uh, through the mayor, there has been an increase of about 900 spaces since the child care action plan was adopted. So yeah, there's a difference about of 1,100 approximately spaces. And specifically for the um, this neighborhood, which is in Upper Capilano, there is um, there was 69 additional infant toddler spaces identified as a need, and there has been an increase of um, 12. And there is also a need for 123 additional preschool spaces. And since then, there has been an increase of 73. Okay, thank you. Okay, seeing no additional speakers online or in person and no additional questions from council. Okay, I'll say that the input period is closed. Oh, Councillor Forbes. Sorry, I just, thank you, Your Worship. Um, just wondering, um, what are the current ages that are, the way the report is written, it doesn't spell out what the current ages of the nine children that you have there now? I'm sorry, I'm going to have to ask you to, Manny, if, you, if I can have you come up to the microphone just so we can hear it on the record, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you very much. And so just to clarify, the question was, Councillor Forbes? What is the current ages? I, I, I see what you want to break them down into, but what is the current ages uh, range of the children? Who For are now, my daycare is multi-age and three children under the three years old and five, three to five years. Okay, all right. Um, and um, there were some concerns about parking. So I just have one clarification as well. You have the four parking spots on your driveway, mm -hmm. and then you have that gravel area that's four. So I'm just trying to clarify, and maybe staff can tell me, is that gravel area um, part of their lot, or is it a variance of the district's property? Uh, through your worship, the gravel area adjacent to the driveway is part of the public right-of-way. It is currently used for on-street parking. Um, but it is not part of the property site. Okay. Thank you. So it's parking that's available to anyone, not just this resident. Correct. Thank you. Um, and just one other question, just to clarify, what is the mode share? How do parents come to you mostly now? Are they walking from within the neighborhood or do mm -hmm. they drive? Some of them, yes. Two to three of them are walking. Uh, yeah, some of them are coming with, with bus and with their car as well. And but you, they are walking. So I think two, two to three of them are coming, walk, are walking. Okay, so yeah, they're not. They are so it, close. It's not increased. It's not increasing your traffic flow or anything because a lot of it, it would be local people yeah, that are it's walking local. to you. Yeah, they are and, so close to our daycare so they can walk. And because of your hours, I'm assuming also that you may avoid congestion because uh, you would have staggered times when people are dropping off and picking up? Yes. Okay, thank you. Oh, did I miss you in the speaker's list? Do you have any additional comments? Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so we've concluded the public input period. So I'll look for a motion from council to close the matter and return it to a regular meeting of council. Councilor Forbes. So moved. So moved, moved, second by Councillor Ma. Call the question on the matter. All in favor, contrary minded, motion carries. Uh, checking the calendar, uh, Madam Clerk, I see that May 6th is the tentative date. Do you have, is that what you have in mind for returning this matter to a regular meeting of council? Yes, thank you, through your worship. Um, we are tentatively scheduled to come back on May 6th for consideration of this item. Okay, so at that time, council will uh, have an opportunity to make their arguments and make their decision at the May 6th meeting. So uh, at, we've concluded the business of this evening's meeting. So thank you all very much for attending. Have yourselves a great evening. Good night.